Okay, I need to make a video on these uh, nice uh, step up, step down panty amp. Uh, here you can buy them here with this LCD, which has indeed a, a 32 bit processor and it could do MPPT. Uh, they are sold as, as MPPT, but if you just buy the signal, then it's just a, a constant output voltage, constant current and constant input voltage. Here there's a, for, for a fan, this is 80 volt, uh, 1.0.8 a down regulator here for this thing, uh, which I have already burned here. And I, I need to make the video be because... Uh, <laughs> before it uh, totally breaks down because of my way of developing. Uh, here there is, this uh, chip does not have a uh, digital uh, DAC, but it could make a PVM and then filter it. And here these little things, uh, yeah, it, it looks like, but it's not really a low pass. And then it's a one mega ohm going here to, to this uh, uh, pin, I think the third, which indeed goes to this potentiometer. Uh, that's why here this is also uh need to upload it i made an mppt uh um, charger here uh, just for with a little oled display and uh, so here this uh, i may put it a bit lower uh, so that this uh, esp32 can go underneath uh, and so uh, here i really go to this uh, potentiometer and here you can see for the output voltage uh, that's the only pin you you need to uh, to go upwards. The other ones are all here in uh, in in the header. Uh, there's the output voltage. I think the second one is the output current. Uh, somewhere there's three point three volt, and and here there's the uh, upper one. Sorry, this uh, smartphone is uh, the lens is a bit uh, okay. Uh, the upper one is. Uh, if you pull it uh, too low, then uh, you can activate here the, uh, this, this machine. So I, I, I didn't need to uh, make use of this because I have uh, found out how to allow be uh, reverse current. I think the second one then is the voltage and the third one is this uh, potentiometer pin here. Uh, okay, but the talk now here is I also have uploaded uh, this uh, to, to some place. So let's go here so here there's a touch screen display uh, and here that's uh, the output voltage um, uh, this is no only the output voltage and this uh, is uh, meant for to to boost my uh, hello <laughs> uh, to boost my uh, uh, solar car from 24 volt here the big battery uh, to up to 50 volts so that I can increase speed from 12 to maybe even 20 uh, kilometer per hour. And so, okay, if you press and you can hear um, up, down, set a new voltage. If you release, then it's set. Here's the input uh, voltage, uh, the output voltage, and here the current. This is already broken, I think, uh, because it no longer shows uh, the, the current. Uh, because when, if there's negative current, you see uh, underneath here, I think it's the second pin here. You have, uh, it, it's uh, in turn, it's going here and back to the 3.3 and that's uh, the mode pin. And you have to uh, interrupt the connection here and put it to ground uh, to, to allow the reverse current. And I think I need the reverse current uh, because then I break uh, then uh, the current has to go back, otherwise the uh, hoverboard controller uh, would might uh, generate uh, too high voltage. And here it's the same problem. Uh, so here now I, I have a battery, and so if I set a voltage out of voltage that's below uh, this voltage, then it starts to pushing backwards, which I is, I want. But if I then pull here the plug, then it really it, it starts to <laughs> to go upwards and. I think that's why I did a blue here, this 80 volt uh, little uh, voltage regulator. And so I now have the circuit. Here you see the red LED. It's red because there's no input voltage. Uh, I detect when it's going above 30.5 volt uh, and then I shut this thing down. Okay, let's uh, turn on all these multimeters. Uh, here that's the current. 
because uh, this uh, thing here, uh, and now here that's, okay. <laughs> Don't know if you can uh, read all, all, all these displays. So now it's uh, not really um, charging. So let's increase the 40 volt uh, to, uh, let's say 42. And then here it's uh, 0.15. Uh, so increase it a bit more. Uh, go to 43 volt. Here it's the output voltage. You see the current is no longer uh, showing anything. It's still, yeah, okay, we don't have a battery connected. <laughs> so let's go back to uh, 1.4 and now connect uh, the battery. And okay, it's about, so let's increase to 24 volt and uh, still no current flowing but we have the 24 so go even higher uh, 33 yeah now we have here 3.4 amps flowing here the 4 amps here the 4 amps but no longer here and um, so I now set it below to show you the back current uh, so let's go to 40 and then here this doesn't show it but here you have the minus 4 volt and now if I pull the plug uh, you see here it did detect the uh, uh, over voltage and it turned red and after three seconds it's it's waiting so if I now uh, put it in then it detects the 28 volt and so it starts again uh, again we have the negative uh, current so it, let's increase the voltage again to uh, 43 you see here it's because here the, the cable so it's the uh, battery is not at, at 43 but here now we have 4 amps let's go to the maximum 45 volt <sighs> that's what I have set but um, here the range is I think I use a 1 kilo ohm uh, pot potent uh, uh, resistor in between uh, this uh, potentiometer and then I have I think plus minus 20 volt but right now here for for, for the touch screen I've set it to uh, minus let's go to the absolute maximum but then here this will uh, start saying uh, that it's uh, less than over overload you see that's not and I think here with this overload, uh, the, the voltage, um, it, it goes negative, but uh, this ESP32 is said to uh, go um, up to minus 0.3 and it was uh, only 100 milliamps. And then I put a resistor, I think a 100, a 1 kilo ohm resistor uh, before the ADC pin and then it was even below, but somehow um, I no longer... Uh, see uh, here the ADC it's still here the, the board is, is still working uh, but uh, the ADC pin uh, so but okay there are other pins to kick uh, we still have uh, minus 3.3 so uh, let's go and charge the battery again yeah that's it um, you see if I here pull the plug then uh, it <laughs> current drops to 15, 150 milliamps or here 100, uh, 0.13 milliamps that's here the thing machine if I here uh, uh, pull the plug then uh, the voltage here uh, should drop because you see the machine turns off and it's only uh, when I pull the plug then as I said here this uh, pin is no longer pulled to zero this is also, you see, I always try to do it with less components as possible. Uh, here, this simply, it's one kilo ohm uh, here, uh, this uh, pin here. One kilo ohm pulling to ground and then it's shut off. But it's enough to the 3.3 volt with a one kilo ohm. Uh, again, is, is lifting here the voltage to 1.3 volt, and the 1.3 volt is enough to to uh, make the thing start up. That's why I did not need a transistor or MOSFET to pull this thing to ground. Simply two resistors, 
And uh, you see here with the uh, ADC, uh, with the current, of course, there should be some diode that would prevent negative voltages. But um, I thought it would was okay to simply make here one kilo ohm uh, as it was just uh, minus 0 0.1 volt. Yeah, that's it. Uh, nice. Ah. <sighs> You see, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to uh, uh, tell, show you how how it's made inside, but here first you see, uh, so here is that's uh, the output. It's all, all already also blinking here, uh, but that's stuff. I can put this code uh, online for free, and so here that's uh, the, the booster file. Uh, that's simply here uh, plus minus one if the voltage is. Uh, is some not not in place uh the display uh is, is here simply my print f function uh which which does it and and, and the, uh, as a loop uh is simply here that the touch screen touched and it's uh, no display and and, and somewhere it's uh, you have to call this booster update uh, which uh, does the ADC and then calls the booster control. Yes, and um, okay, then I will continue to show you the three layers. Uh, so uh, unplug this and unplug that. And perhaps a little zoom. Uh, you see here, you should uh, discharge. Uh, do I have a resistor somewhere? Uh, because that's how I burned this board. For some reason, it was uh, the capacitors uh, had so much energy that uh, did measure some voltage here, and suddenly here really it burned at a flame and was not connected. Only these two capacitors were able to. Uh, and and then of course again here. Uh, can you can you read them? As I said, this uh, smartphone. Uh, Okay, so it's off. Let's turn off the voltages. And then you have here. Ah, so it's. This is a touchscreen, about four euro, I think, uh, with shipping uh, on top. No, touchscreen. And then you have here the ESP32. Uh, and now you have. Yeah, this and there is this uh, to what you do. You could also control it here. You see, you pull it up to 3.3 volt, and then you would uh, disallow uh, this uh, background just as with the original, or pull it to ground to to allow reverse current. But then you, I would have to uh, add another cable going upwards, and these can always rip off. And that's but why I choose here to to use the disable. And that's quite nice here. This is this just a standard, oh, don't know. Uh, three centimeters to eight centimeters, something like that. We simply uh, solder here this to the spec sides, whereas the other one is a, a male header. And here is this uh, 90 degree. And for the display, these are these are the ESP uh, uh, Lolland D D1 Mini. They always ha had these uh, long uh, milk headers. You can use them to go upwards. Okay. So that's the breadboard. You see only, only a few resistors. So you see we, we could, uh, or someone of you could, could make a real uh, a layout uh, PCB because you see the A332 is quite cheap. So it really it's uh, only something like $2. Uh, so uh, ESP S2 here to, to put it here, then you would not need these uh, long headers and, and could go a bit lower, but you can build yourself. Yeah, that's it.